Welcome guys, this is the shootout of the uh, drill driver versus the impact driver. Now this one here is a Makita, it is the LXT um, kind of entry level uh, impact driver by Makita. I don't know the exact ink pounds of torque, but it's probably 1300, 1400 inch pounds of torque uh, because it's got the, uh, the hammer and the anvil, uh, anvil uh, action on it, <coughs> the impact action. Um, uh, hitting the uh, screw rotationally uh, so that it goes in and this is good for uh, various things good for driving screws there's a specific purpose that it's uh, that it's good at that I like um, but I will tell you up front that I do prefer for general purpose I prefer um, my uh, Makita uh, drill driver and this is actually a combi drill this is a really nice drill I did an uh, unboxing of it <clears throat> it is a DHP 41Z by Makita, the brushless version, you can see it's brushless because of the BL motor on the end of it here. <clears throat> and it's got a couple of settings. It's got hammer mode, which is really nice for concrete. It's got your drill mode and your screw driving mode. And it has a separate collar uh, for your torque settings, uh, which, uh, which are uh, used in the screw driving mode. So I've got a couple different length screws here. And I've just got a, <clears throat> a Red Roberts in here. Um, I've got, I think this is a three inch screw here, and I've got, I've got a little uh, one inch screw here. And uh, for these screws, I'll tell you right off the bat, I like my uh, drill driver combi drill for the shorter screws, and I'll show you why. Um, but the first thing is I want to show you uh, what happens with a drill driver on, say, the three inch screw here. And uh, so I'm going to pop this bit in. I'm going to use the same bit. And I've actually only got one battery, which is just as well. It's a 1.5 amp hour uh, battery. I'll plug it into my DHP 481Z. I just like saying that. In the US, it's also known as a, uh, XPH07, I believe. So it's on drill mode. I'm going to put it on a screw mode here. And uh, the torque setting doesn't really matter. It's got the torque setting so that you can uh, sink the head of the screw. Uh, into the wood or or make it flush with the wood you can set your your torque there which is kind of nice which is not the same as impact um, the torque um, collar just slips the chuck when it gets too much uh, pressure when it feels too much pressure coming back when the screw is too hard to push in anymore more, the chuck starts slipping and you can set the sensitivity with the uh, torque ring there torque clutch now the, the biggest thing about the impact is that when you're driving really long screws like this um, the Robertson bit, for example, tends to pop out and uh, skip and uh, start stripping your, your screw head. So I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to try and screw this, uh, screw this three-inch uh, screw in into the wood here, which is uh, kind of, it's this is an old uh, chicken shed I'm in, and this wood is pretty old, and so it's pretty thick, heavy, um, you know, full two-inch by four-inch, uh, you know, rough-cut wood. So I'm going to try and screw this in. And uh, with, uh, you know, medium pressure, uh, but we'll see. I'm on uh, transmission speed one and on my screw driving uh, action here. And uh, we'll see if it pops out of the screw. So at the end, you saw it started uh, skipping there. It actually did pretty good for what it was, actually. Uh, but it did start skipping. Now, one thing about... Take that all the way out. I'm going to flip this bit. I'm going to put it over on the impact one, and uh, and we'll try that. The nice thing about the impact is that for the same amount of pressure, it doesn't skip half as much, and uh, that's because it actually ends up. If I can get the battery out here, it almost taps the battery into place, and uh, while it's tapping. Um, it actually, uh, every time it taps, in between taps, as you put pressure on it, I think the, uh, the Robertson end actually sit, uh, pushes itself, sinks it back into the screw head, allows it to settle back in so it doesn't sort of edge itself out of the hole on the Robertson. But we're going to try this with the, uh, with the impact. We're going to do a new hole here. And you'll, you'll hear right away the impact, uh, the typical chatter of the, the impact as it starts hitting once it... Uh, encounters any resistance. Now you can hear it's very loud obviously 
uh, but it didn't skip once. But it goes really slowly uh, compared to the drill driver. It, it puts that three inch screw in really slowly, uh, but it doesn't skip. And I'll bring you a little bit closer, you can see. I've got my wrong hand holding the drill, but I'll see if I can do it. Now, as you can see, it's still putting that in, but it certainly didn't go in as fast as my um, DHP481Z. Um, the inch-pounds of torque on this particular impact driver actually may not be as high as uh, the green uh, the green Makita impact. That would be the, the counterpart to this one. This is actually the flagship model uh, Makita, um, 1,090 inch-pounds of torque. So it's got a lot of torque, um, especially in the low gear. But it's still going. But one thing you notice is that it never skips. It never, the bit never comes out of the screw. And so for the same amount of force, the impact actually allows you to put in bigger screws, uh, heavier screws, because it doesn't, uh, it doesn't end up pulling out. And there's a lot more uh, torque afforded to you because of the hammering, the rotational hammering that's happening with the, uh, with the impact driver. Uh, so that's kind of nice. Um, so that, I find it's great for anything, uh, you know, two and a half, three inches long screws. For anything that is like the short screw here, where, uh, you know, you're not going in very far, so there's not going to be a lot of torque required to get that one in there. Um, so I actually uh, don't necessarily care to use an impact, although the impact is nice and light, actually, so just for that purpose, it's kind of handy. But I actually don't like the, the noise that the impact creates. And uh, I, that is one thing. And then also, um, I have more options actually with the with the drill driver um, for screwing holes, such as the the torque collar. So <clears throat> I'm gonna put this this bit back in here. Switch batteries. I need to get myself another battery here. I will uh, mention that the uh, lights on these are really nice too. Um, so I'm going to take this three inch out. Oh. Uh, let's see, I got my torque clutch is engaging there. Screw here. Like I was saying, this is 1,090 inch pounds of torque. This is a really beefy machine. DHP 41 that is a really awesome tool. Um, and like I was saying, for these small little guys, one inch, two inch. Um, I don't have a lot of head slip because uh, it's not going in that far. Um, it's not as big a screw. You know, obviously it doesn't require as much torque. Uh, but in that application, <clears throat> I do uh, like to use often uh, the torque clutch. So if I set it down to one, uh, it just this this just gives you the option of uh, countersinking or uh, maybe even not screwing the uh, screw. All the way into the wood, it, it allows you to kind of measure where you're going to put it. So there's a there's where it's uh, showing just above the wood there. Um, it probably would have almost countersink if I went in straight. Um, but for versatility and general purpose, I actually do like the combi driver, the drill driver, and uh, this 481Z does it all with the hammer mode on it. And I would use it for everything other than uh, you know three and two and a half three inch screws and up or maybe if you're doing a lot of overhead work where the maybe the weight of this is uh, cumbersome uh, then the the impact is fine but again uh, you know when I'm working around livestock chickens and such the the noise of the impact driver I find is uh, is uh, bothersome and it really scares the birds uh, we found that with the meat birds actually you get the impact driver in here and it it almost makes them uh, pile on top of each other where they're about to kill each other because they're smothering each other because they're scared of the noise of it. Whereas with this, I mean, it just sounds like a little drill. Um, and like I say, as long as you're not drilling three inch uh, screws, it's not a big deal. Now, where it comes in handy is um, the, another place I should say where it comes in handy is the ability to put in leg bolts. Now, I'll do a leg bolt. I've just got a little, uh, What do you call it? A ratchet? Uh, whatever. Got a 
converter to here, a quarter inch converter for this, uh, for this uh, leg bolt. So I'm going to try and put this leg bolt in with my DHP-41Z. It'll probably do it, um, and it'll do it real fast, but if you had a lesser drill, it may not have the power needed to get the leg bolt in. This one I bet you will. I think it will have the power to get it in, and uh, I'll just bring this closer here so you can see. see it. I'm going to start put it in an existing hole where I put the screw in. You can see that the LED lights are real nice. So this is potentially going to be um, uh, real hard on my wrist. We'll see. I'll just put uh, kind of light pressure on it, and uh, we'll, uh, it's on transmission speed one, and this is a three-inch leg bolt. And uh, I'm on clutch one, so that doesn't help. Let me put it up to right up to clutch twenty-one. You could just uh, to get around it, you could just put it on drill mode, and that just locks it up up to clutch there. And the uh, drill actually shut itself off. That's an automatic override. When it gets, uh, when it's pulling too much torque, it shuts itself off. Let me see if I can finish this here. Oh, okay. That's as far as it wants to go. I need to put this in drill mode so it completely gets rid of the uh, clutch. That's interesting. Oh, and it sh went into shut off, automatic uh, shut off. It was drawing too much power. So that's fine. Um, it would do it. Um, I'm not going to stress it. I've only got a 1.5 amp hour battery and it's actually showing one bar left so it's actually pretty low power. It is minus 10 out here in the chicken shed as well so this is not an easy test for these. But what I'll do is I'll put, um, I'm going to try and take this out here. Actually I'm going to use the impact to take it out um, because the impact is actually uh, better for this purpose. So I'll actually see if it pulls it out here. And I don't know, maybe it won't. The DHP 481Z was showing itself to be uh, stronger. So let's see here. All right, I got my bit here. Put it on reverse, and we'll see if I can remove this. Wow. So this actually broke. This uh, this leg bolt actually broke off. I guess because the power of the, the DHP481Z. That is amazing. Okay. Uh, I'm going to see if I can find another leg bolt. I don't know if I have another one in the shed right now. But that's fascinating. It broke that right off. Um, well, guys. Um, my lens is dirty again. You just saw the uh, awesome power of the 1,098 pounds of torque that the uh, Makita DHP-41Z comes with. It actually broke the head off the uh, leg bolt and totally killed uh, that demonstration. Um, that's all right, I think the uh, the impact would do it. It actually may not have as much power as this guy. This is a top of the line flagship uh, drill driver, as I was saying, combi drill. But uh, that's fine, I think you get the idea. Um, this guy's pretty powerful and it uh, has no trouble drilling stuff, especially if I had a something more than a 1.5 amp hour battery. I think it was just drawn too much. But I'm going to try the hammer mode now. I do have some masonry bits. And I have a couple of uh, a couple of bricks here. And these are just old bricks that are actually sitting around. Let's see. Let me use this one here. And I'm just going to see if I can uh, put this guy in hammer mode. And uh, try drilling a hole. I've never actually tried this before. So this will be new. I'm going to take the maximum size masonry bit here just to give it a go. Give it a run for its money. Run for my money, I guess. I'll get that out. Alright. Get this out of the way here. Now just so you can see what I'm doing. Open that up. Now this is a two inch uh, sorry, uh, a half inch uh, chuck on it, which is nice for the bigger bits. And uh, so I'm going to put this on hammer mode there, the hammer icon. And uh, so what happens is when the when the chuck gets pushed down in hammer mode, it actually starts a hammering action there. So let's see if we can hope you can see that. I'm just going to see if this works. Move that bit there because that's not helping. 
maybe a little closer and you can actually see it. Look at the dust that thing's kicking up. So that, that works pretty well. Now, I think uh, you could hear the drill actually slowing down. It's because my 1.5 amp hour battery is just about dead. It has uh, one line on it, as you can see there on the top. So, But it drilled it fine. And uh, if I kept pressure on it, it would keep going. So I'm, I'm happy with that. I mean, I don't have too many purposes to use it on concrete. And uh, for all I know, that brick could be actually a little harder than concrete har concrete uh, t tends to I think to be a little bit more porous actually than that brick appears to be so that was uh, probably tough work for it but it worked fine and uh, again that's part of the combi drill and part of the reason why I like the combi drill uh, because it does give you a wide variety of options and like I say the only thing that I find the impact is really uh, helpful for for me personally uh, because I don't like the noise of it, I don't like using it for general purpose situations. Um, it's only good for uh, kind of the three inch screws and, and maybe if you're outside uh, doing work out in, the, out in the shed where no one's bothered by the click clack of the, uh, the impact driver. Uh, apparently in new impact drivers they've gotten around that with the, I think an oil based uh, impact driver uh, versus the mechanical one. I think uh, you know it uses oil or something, so it's a bit quieter. But uh, but like I say, for general purpose, um, I still do prefer the combi drill. And uh, this is going to be my workhorse. I, I bought top of the line flagship uh, model from Makita A because I like Makita, and uh, B because uh, the drill in my set is what gets the most use by far. Uh, Ten, fifteen. 100 times more than any of the other tools. I have a Black & Decker combination set. I had a drill, uh, a skill saw, a sawzall, and a flashlight I think came with it. And I, I wrecked uh, the uh, driver, the drill driver. Um, it was a pretty basic one, nothing fancy about it. I mean, Black & Decker is your bottom of the line sort of a, a product. I think it's, I think DeWalt actually is the company that makes uh, the, the Black & Decker stuff. And, uh, Get this set up here, and it worked fine. You know, I have no problem with the combination uh, set. I still use it, and one of my future videos is actually going to be converting the Black and Decker uh, 18 volt NICADs to the Nik uh, Makita 18 volt lithium ion. And I have something coming in the post uh, to do the conversion there, and I'll do a video on that. And it's gonna, I think the whole conversion, if it works out properly, is going to be about thirty dollars. Uh, to switch over the uh, Black & Decker tools to use Makita batteries. So I hope that goes well. And then what I'll do as I have time, well, as I have money, is I'll slowly replace the Black & Decker stuff as they break. If my Sawzall breaks, I'll go, I'd go out and get a Makita Sawzall, uh, you know, 18 volt cordless, uh, cordless, obviously, instead of replacing it with a Black & Decker, of course. Um, but I'm not immediately going to go out and uh, just get a, a Makita Sawzall and get rid of the Black & Decker because the Black & Decker works fine. Nothing wrong with it. It's pretty much brand new. I, you know, in its whole life, I've maybe used it, uh, you know, 30, 40 times. So it's a new tool. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, maybe lacks a bit of the power of a Makita, but I mean, you know, for the DIY stuff that I do around the house or, or the chicken shed or whatever, it works perfectly fine, especially when you get a nice fresh uh, Sawzall blade on there or a circular saw blade. A fresh blade makes a makes a tool run like new, um, as well as a, a properly charged uh, battery. My NICADs are getting old; they just don't have the runtime that they did, uh, and it, it reflects badly on the tools often. Uh, but if you just get a, a new battery, whether NICAD or lithium ion, those tools work like new. So that's my plan. I don't want to invest in old NICAD technology. The lithium ion lasts longer. Uh, when you're using them and actually last uh, more years uh, in general they and they have they don't have the memory troubles that NICADs have and and they're much much lighter this is uh, 
the same amp hour, 1.5 amp hours as my NICAD, and my NICAD is about three times uh, the size of that, that battery there. Oops. And this thing's light as a feather, um, but this is like a third of the size of my NICAD batteries. So to switch my Black & Decker over to this, and then just grow my Makita set, which is a good quality, a better quality set, and uh, my, my favorite, um, then, uh, you know, my, my money is better spent, and I'll have uh, much better tools at the end of it. And meanwhile, um, I won't be uh, wasting the money I already put into those tools. And I'm perfectly fine. The skill saw works great. I can get through 2x6s no problem uh, with the skill saw, as long as I have a good battery on it, uh, whether it's NICAD or lithium ion, as long as the battery's good, it goes through a 2x6 no problem. And it goes through multiple no problems. It's got enough power. They both each, they each have enough power. So, that's kind of a, a, a review and also uh, a discussion on uh, you know the differences between impact drivers and uh, you know combi drills, drill drivers, and uh, what I prefer. And I, I kind of have uh, different ideas than uh, many people, but I do prefer uh, the less noise and just the uh, versatility and the torque clutch on these guys versus the loud impact drivers. And so the impact driver is a niche product for me. If I was building a house, I needed a light, nice light tool that didn't suck as much juice as this guy, and I was outside in a work site anyways, then maybe the noise doesn't matter. But uh, for DIY stuff, working in the basement, you know, when your kids are sleeping or whatever, having a tool like this that kind of does everything, it's a jack of all trades, uh, and it's almost the master of all of them because this, I mean, this is the top of the line Makita flagship model. Um, it's going to do everything I need it to and then some, and uh, you, you just saw it outperform um, the entry-level uh, white model uh, Makita impact driver. Um, tons of power in this particular uh, in this particular guy. So I love this, it's a bit of a review, and uh, <coughs> here's the uh, white Makita again, just to show them side by side. Nice light guy, and uh, for three inch screws, perfect. Um, but this guy for everyday use this is my go-to general purpose this will be my workhorse in my tool set and i hope this lasts 20 30 years because my black and decker lasted 10 years or so um, so i would hope this outlasted by at least twice because i paid well much more than twice uh, the price for for this versus that one so that is it hope you enjoyed it i uh, hope you appreciated uh, some of the, the demonstrations there uh, let me know what you think and uh, uh, let me know what your favorite brand is and why and, and also whether you use an impact driver uh, for everything, whether you mind the noise of it, uh, whether you just prefer it because it doesn't skip out of uh, screws half as much as a regular drill driver does in most situations. And uh, I'd be interested to know. Um, please subscribe if you uh, appreciated this. Give me the thumbs up and the like and all that kind of good stuff. And uh, thanks for watching and we'll talk to you in the next video.